How's it going, folks? Hope we're all keeping well. Uh, so we just started at the coast yesterday, um, and we spoke about waves. We spoke about um, constructive waves. We spoke about destructive waves. We spoke about the swash. Uh, that is the way that hits the, the the beach and the the backwash is when the wave retreats back out to the sea. We also spoke about how the west of Ireland has got a kind of a, a rough sort of indented coastline because of the powerful waves off the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, um, now guys, we're going to look in, uh, in uh, more specifically at exactly the processes involved in coastal erosion. So how do how exactly do waves erode our coast? Okay, um, and there are a number of ways it does this. Okay, and the, if we look at the slide in front of us here, guys, we can see the first way is hydraulic action. Okay, and hydraulic action is literally the sheer force of the waves pounding against the crust or pounding against the coast. Okay, so guys, if you like think about it, if you ever stand on a beach and you know you stand there and let a wave hit you, if that wave is powerful enough, like that, that would be quite sore to hit you. You'd feel it. Okay, and um, like this relentless, you know, th this relentless kind of pounding from the wa of the wave off the coastline has the same effect on the rock. Okay, so the constant pounding of the water off the rock will eventually slowly but surely break down that coastline. Okay, if we look here, guys, we can see hydraulic action. Okay, literally just the force of the water pounding against the the rock here. Okay, and eventually it weakens the rock. It weakens the rock, and eventually bits of rock start to break off and crack. Okay, so that's the first one, guys. Hydraulic action is the sheer power of the waves, the power of the water hitting off the rock. Okay. Um, our second way the coastline is eroded is by compressed air, okay? And this is very, very straightforward, guys. Um, basically, when you've got any little crack, okay, any little bit of cr any crack, for example, in the rock, um, when the water hits that rock, okay, that's, the water is going to quickly fill that rock full of air. Okay, it's a bit like guys, for example, if you get a syringe and you put your, your thumb over the end of the syringe and you try, you try and um, push the syringe, okay, you, you won't because you're, you're, it, the syringe is full of air and your finger is stopping the air being released from the syringe. And the same thing happens here, guys, okay, so the little cracks here, for example, the little cracks here uh, are full of air and the water is preventing that air from leaving. So as a result, it kind of creates like a, a mini kind of explosion almost, okay, and uh, over time, this can this pressure can can continue and continue to shatter the rock okay so as this happens uh, the continuation of the waves can cause these little cracks to fill up with with air and this air is nowhere to go so eventually this air can can damage and crack and break off the rock okay now our third way that the sea can erode um, the coast is by abrasion okay um, and abrasion guys is caused by uh, when pebbles and stones and rocks are dashed against the coast by the waves okay so guys you know as the sea comes in okay as the sea comes in the sea um, carries ca carries what's called its load and that load is bits of you know shells rocks pebbles sand sediment okay and as that sediment hits off the coastline that sediment will break down the coastline. So if you look here, guys, you can see um, abrasion. So it's the, the load, the rocks that are being carried in the water, hitting off the coastline and breaking off the coastline. Okay, so for example, again, if you stood there and a wave hit you, and in that wave you felt, you know, something hard hitting off you, that's probably a rock or a shell that's being carried in that wave. Okay, so that's abrasion, guys. Um, attrition, okay. Um, attrition guys is an interesting one attrition guys so we've just mentioned how waves have a load waves carry things like rocks shells bits of sediment um, and that sediment can hit off the coastline and break down the coastline but that sediment guys can also hit off itself okay and break itself down okay so attrition is when pebbles and stones that are carried in the sea rub against each other and hit against each other and as a result they become rounded and worn down okay and eventually the rocks are broken down into fine sand so that's how sand is formed guys okay so if you look up here here we have rocks big rocks that are carried in our wave when these rocks rub off each other or they break off each other they rub off each other they grind each other down and they eventually form uh, very very fine bits which make up our sand on the beach that's how sand gets on a beach guys okay sand used to be bits of shell and rock that's broken down into really small pieces and has been deposited or dropped on a beach and this is called attrition okay when the particles and the, and the, and the pebbles and stones carried in the wave rub off each other and wear each other down down. okay 
Um, and our final way um, which the sea erodes is solution. Okay, and this guy is, you know, the sea. What does the sea contain? The sea contains salt. Okay, you, like, you, can't, you can't drink seawater. It's not very, really not good for you, okay? And that salt, guys, um, has a corrosive effect on the water. So that salt will break down the rocks and the coastline, okay? And again, that is, um, that's called solution. So you can't actually see solution happening. You can't physically see the salt, but the salt is there in mineral form, and that mineral form will break down the coastline and break down rocks that are carried within the, low, uh, within the wave as well. Okay, so to recap guys, hydraulic action, hydraulic action is the sheer force of the waves crashing off the coastline, then you've got compressed air, compressed air is when the cracks, uh, these cracks get full up of air, this air gets compressed by the waves, and this kind of can cause pressure, and the cracks to become enlarged and break off. You then have abrasion. Abrasion is when rocks and stones carried in the wave smack off your cliff or your, or your coastline and break it down. You've got attrition. That's when the rocks smack off each other and wear each other down, becoming smaller, as we can see here. Eventually, this will be left on a beach to form sand. And finally, we've got solution. And solution is when uh, the salt minerals within the seawater erode rocks and erode the coastline. Okay, Again, you cannot see that's the salt. Okay. Now, so we've just looked at how the sea erodes. Now we're going to look at how the sea transports, okay? And the sea transports guys by longshore drift. And we would have briefly talked, spoken about longshore drift in our previous chapter, but now we're going to look at it in a bit more detail. And longshore drift, guys, is very, very simple, okay? Longshore drift, okay, so remind, uh, to, to recap, uh, what causes waves? Waves are caused by wind. Okay, and you know, it's very rare that wind is going to blow against the coastline at a, at a perfect straight angle. Wind is usually blowing at a str at, a, at, a, at, a, at a, an odd angle, so it might be blowing at 45 degrees, okay, or 50 degrees. So, what effect does this have? Well, it means that the waves hit the beach at an angle, so the swash hits the beach at an angle, uh, and the backwash brings it out straight. The swash hits the beach at an angle, the backwash brings it out straight. And this can, because of this, it can transport material, okay? So if we look here, guys, just imagine, okay? So we've got our swash here. So this, imagine the swash hits the beach, okay? And that swash takes some sand off the beach and brings it back out. Then the swash is going to hit the beach at another angle because, because the wind is blowing the waves at the beach at an angle. So the swash hits the beach here. It's going to take up some more sand and it's going to bring it back out. What's the swash going to do? Surprise, surprise. It's going to hit the beach again at, a, at another uh, 45 degree angle and it's going to bring it back out. And what this can do is, guys, this, this means that longshore drift can take sand and sediment from this part of a beach. And because the waves are moving all the time at an angle... That, that sand can be deposited or dropped over here somewhere, okay? So that's, it can transport beach sediment, okay? And that's why, guys, if you think back um, to our, our, remember our groins, our long pieces of uh, kind of wooden fences that were built up as, at right angles from the coast. These are to prevent sand being transported by waves from one part of the beach to another, okay? Because longshore drift is not really a good thing because it takes valuable sand from one part of a beach and puts it somewhere else, okay? So... When waves approach the shore at an angle, the load is moved along the shore. This is known as longshore drift. Waves break on the shore, and the swash carries the material up the shore, where some of it is deposited. Okay, so again, guys, wave the waves hit the shore. So the swash hits the shore, but the swash does not hit the shore straight. The swash hits the shore at an angle, depending on wind direction. Okay, and then um, what what can what this can do? This can t take up some. The, the waves can take up some sand, bring it back out to the to the sea, and then hit the the shore again at an angle. Okay, um, the backwash carries some of the material back down the beach at a right angle over time the zigzag movement of the swash okay and the straight movement of the backwash can cause sand and shingle to move along the length of the shore okay very very straightforward guys so you've got the wind blowing at a funny direction at a 45 degree angle like like so that wind causes the waves to hit the beach i.e our swash at an angle so when the waves hit the beach the waves can sometimes collect up some little bits of sand okay 
Uh, now the waves will retreat back out carrying the sand and then the waves will hit the beach again. So the wave will hit the beach again. Again, is it going to hit the beach straight? No, it's going to hit the beach at a 45 degree angle depending on the wind. Okay, but this time when it hits the beach it might drop the sand it had taken from over here. Okay, so that's how uh, sand can be transported along the beach, okay, by long shore drift. Okay, folks, thanks very much for watching. What I'd like you to do now is just to simply take down the notes from the slides as well as the diagrams into your notes copy, okay.